So I just want to give you guys a take. And uh, everyone uh, is actually talking about the ETF that is coming. Uh, I'm not so happy. I'm not so happy as the majority of people about this ETF coming and being approved by the SEC in the United States because uh, it, everything points to being um, leveraged or futures ETF. And in this case, I don't like it so much. I would much more prefer to be uh, prefer it to be a spot market ETF. Um, of course, it's always good to have an ETF. It means the SEC trusts the asset itself, Bitcoin. And also this opens doors to a lot of different investors, institutional investors and other big whales just waiting to get into the market. But the problem, in my opinion, is that a futures ETF will um, in some way, you know, corrupt the 21 million uh, cap for Bitcoin, because when you start to trade paper assets, there's no limit to the amount you can trade. So this will, of course, um, let's say, remove this big virtue of Bitcoin of having a cap of 21 million coins. So that means that you can trade futures all you want, you can leverage the market all you want, but the 21 million coins will just apply to the spot market and then people can still trade it on paper uh, as, you know, as many millions as they want to trade in dollars, of course. And this will in some way uh, remove this, this big, big, big virtue of Bitcoin, which is to have a cap of 21 million coins. So in that case, I don't like it very much. Of course, Willy Woo also said uh, something alike, and he says that this will be bad for retail investors. And why? Willy Woo says that um, he suggests, Willy Woo here has suggested that a Bitcoin futures exchange traded fund in the United States may be bad for retail investors as it places institutional investors such as hedge funds at an advantage. And this is related, of course, with what I said before, that when you start to trade an asset with paper, not just the asset itself, then it becomes kind of, uh, you know, all the virtues of the asset itself start to be removed from the equation. And then uh, it's, um, I don't like it. I think I, I share the same opinion as Willy Wu. I think this will not be so good for retail investors as we, the plebs and the small bulls that are always trying to get a few coins on the spot market. And I guess that the hedge funds and the big whales will have an advantage trading futures and futures will also because of the volume traded on the futures part of this asset will also have a great impact on the spot market. Uh, don't forget in 2017, we had the top of Bitcoin around 20K exactly on the same day as the uh, futures of Bitcoin started to be traded on the uh, CBOE, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this was a few years ago already, so I can't remember exactly all details. But from that point on, we started the bear market of several years because, you know, every time whales, big whales, big investors, hedge funds and, 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 and guys like those start to invest in an asset that completely changes all the rules of the market. So in my humble opinion, I think a futures ETF is not so good for retail investors like us, like the plebs here. I would much uh, prefer a spot ETF where they have to buy the coins themselves. Um, and um, that would, of course, impact the market to have Bitcoin going to higher levels. And the futures ETF can actually make the market go lower for lower levels of the price of the spot assets. So let's see how this goes. But my opinion is this one. This is my take on the SEC approving a futures ETF. I completely share the same opinion as Willy Wu. And uh, he also thinks that this is not so good for retail investors as this news from Yahoo Finance uh, says here. So that's it, guys.